The Victorian era is not just a time period. It was social class, economics, politics, scientific progress, technology, psychology, and new theories such as evolution and eugenics. The Victorian era got its name from Queen Victoria, who ruled Britain from 1837 to 1901. During this time, most of what we know to be the Victorian era was everything to do with European high society in Britain. However, during the same time frame, a tiny, tiny group of black Americans also participated in their form of the Victorian era. If you've seen the Netflix series Bridgerton, then you've seen the reference of what would be considered a black Victorian woman named Sarah, who was Queen Victoria's goddaughter. However, when it comes to black Victorians in America, society, you barely ever see any reference of them. Technically, there was never any real Victorian era in America because during the time of 1837 to 1863, most black Americans were enslaved and could not freely participate in social class systems or politics. It wasn't until the early 1900s, well after physical slavery had ended where black Americans were allowed to build create social class systems within black American society, participate in scientific progress, technology, psychology, and much more. This period, 1837 to 1900, is known as the antebellum period of 1812 to 1865 in American history, which also encompassed the time frame of the Civil War. We all know that the Civil War is what constitutionally gave black and slave Americans their physical freedom. Now that we've gotten the backdrop of the Victorian era laid out, let's talk about the so-called black Victorian woman. Let's start with the characteristics of what defined a real Victorian. Things like social status, AKA class, intelligence, AKA education, money aka economics in wealth politics aka male political views particularly white male political views because black people were not able to vote until the civil rights movement in 1965 and the most important thing power because black people during that time did not and could not on a large scale participate with the european victorian era black society created their own this meant that black women were married to black men or partnered to white men who were wealthy educated and and high up on the social class status hierarchy black men particularly had to have a special type of influence because black men had to be able to maneuver between white spaces which had a completely different power and rulership structure than that of black spaces black victorian women was the wife homemaker and mother like white victorian women black victorian women strictly participated in the gender roles of that time this meant that the beautiful black victorian woman living in america were with men who paid for their lavish and luxurious lifestyles. This meant that the Victorian woman was not going 50-50 or expected to hold a struggle man down. This also meant that the Victorian black woman was privileged to raise her children in middle to upper class environments and not expected to have children only to send those children out into the working hard labor force to make money to help with the paying of the bills are forced to raise her children in poverty or crime riddled areas the point that i make is that when we when you are afforded the environment the class status education wealth while also being honored and respected it makes all the difference to the women's psychology femininity worldviews and respect in the world why am i pointing this out well re well while researching the black victorian woman i kept seeing men pointing out how 
feminine, naturally beautiful, and seemingly submissive these women are, but completely leaving out the characteristics of the Victorian men of that era, which were the men that the Victorian women were uh, were partnered with. The black men that those women were partnered with were providers, respected, wealthy, intelligent, prominent, and disciplined. Men like that make a, a hell of a lot different in communities and in legacy building. Of course, the residue and the aftermath of slavery pay, played a major role in black communities during the time. So when we point out things like femininity of that time, we also have to point out masculinity of that time as well and how to be considered high class, high society, honorable and respected you were not participating in 50 50 or child labor by sending your children out to the labor force to help with the paying of the bills key takeaway point that i want you guys to take away from this video is that when we start comparing the women of yesterday's time from you know back in the day from the past in the women of today's time yes there are many many differences but we also have to take into consideration everything that was going on during those time frames. Everything politically, everything socially, everything economically, everything religiously. We have to make sure that we are painting an accurate picture because when you have people talking about, oh, well, the women were like this and the women were like that, it's like, okay, well, also the men were like this and the men were like that the women were not in environments where there was a baby mama epidemic the women were also not in environments where there was you know you know situations where um the crime among you know black men killing each other or a black woman child or you know young girl being taken out every 5.5 hours those things did not exist like they do now yes you had some crime but nothing like we have it now nothing like so yes we can sit up and talk about you know racism we can sit up and talk about white supremacy of that time we can even talk about it of right now in today's time however again we still have to talk about the different environments that these people were growing up in and how the different environments also reflect the overall situation so you cannot expect a woman to go out every day work just as hard as the man right she's out here washing toilets washing clothes we're talking about 1800s you guys 1800s right after you know physical slavery ended right or even before physical slavery ended during the the victorian period where black women were side by side in the fields with the men black women were even after the the uh the up uh, the after slavery black women were still going out every day walking miles to get to work walking miles to get back home black women were you know working long hours you know struggling just right beside the black men we were in the same situation so you cannot expect for a woman who comes from that type of situation to be the most submissive be the most you know the most any of that any feminine feminine i mean a feminine woman is not in the field working her hands to the bone a feminine woman is not going 50 50 either especially in that time if we want to talk about and compare the victorian woman the victorian woman of that time was submissive because the man of that time made provisions for her to be home was taken care of his children were taken care of their education was taken care of their wealth was taken care of you, you, you see the difference? So I just wanted to point that out. I am interested to know what you guys think about this particular topic. Put your comments in the comment box below and uh, we'll talk uh, in the next video. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you enjoyed the content. Thank you.